हेलो माय डियर फ्रेंड्स आई एम शुभम फ्रॉम लर्न हॉब द फ्री लर्निंग प्लेटफॉर्म वेर यू कैन स्टडी फिजिक्स केमिस्ट्री मैथ्स बायोलॉजी एब्सोल्युटली फॉर फ्री एट लर्न हॉब डॉट कॉम सो देन लेट स्टार्ट सो फ्रेंड्स इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी योर आईसीएससी केमिस्ट्री क्लास नाइन चैप्टर नंबर थ्री वॉटर एक्चुअली वी आर गोइंग टू कंटिन्यू आर कॉन्सेप्ट continue this studying the concepts of this chapter okay in this video because we have already started with this chapter in the previous video if you have missed watching that video you can go back to that video because those are some basics related to the water now we are going to completely start some new topics related to water in this video and after learning the concepts we are also going to test our understanding how much we have understood with the help of some questions so without wasting much time let's start and let's rock so before moving ahead the child says let's have a look over the topics which we are going to study in this video and yes so we are going to see we are going to understand what are hydrated and anhydrous substances what is efflorescence what is deliquescence what is hygroscopy what are drying and dehydrating agents okay so let's start first with the hydrated substances okay so now before starting to understand what are hydrated substances let's first understand what is the meaning of water of crystallization because this term will help us understand what are hydrated substances and what are anhydrous substances okay so now what is water of crystallization it's very very simple okay these are the fixed number of water molecules or fixed amount of water molecules right which are associated with some compounds clear so now let's see the examples then it would be much more clear to you okay so for example if i'm having okay this washing soda crystals so if i would look into their formula which is c na2co3 dot 10 h2o now here in this formula these 10 water molecules are fixed number of water molecules okay which are associated with this sodium carbonate okay and how they are written you have to pay attention see after sodium carbonate we have we have a dot and then 10 h2o okay so these are the fixed number of water molecules associated with this compound and these fixed number of water molecules are called as water of crystallization okay here clear in this example now how to write the chemical name it's very very easy what you have to do is simply you need to take the name of the compound first okay write it as it is sodium carbonate okay i have written it sodium carbonate suppose and then after that dot how many water molecules are there you need to add a prefix which for 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 10 it is hep for, for 10 it is deca okay so sodium carbonate deca and then for water you just simply write hydrate okay so sodium carbonate deca hydrate this would be its chemical name see sodium carbonate deca hydrate clear so in the same way we have some another examples as well so i have deliberately written the names of the examples in a way you would be it would be easier for you to remember so next is glober salt now see this was sodium carbonate dot 10h2 glober salt is sodium sulfate dot 10h2 sodium sulfate dot 10h2 name would be sodium sulfate deca hydrate right simple so now what you are going to do is by looking at the chemical formula you are going to deduce the chemical name right it's a simple activity or simple exercise for you so for first two we have written now let's let's see the next common name of the compound which is epsom salt now you have to remember this okay the common names and the formula once you remember the formula you can write the chemical name as well okay because there is a simple method to write the chemical name so for epsom salt epsom salts formula is now here see we have covered the sodium carbonates sodium carbonate dot 10h2 then sodium sulfate dot 10h2 now we are going to see the sulfates but of of magnesium so it would be magnesium sulfate and the number of water molecules would be reduced dot 7h2 so magnesium sulfate dot 7h2 clear so now here what would be the name magnesium sulfate heptahydrate hepta 7 right in the same way blue vitriol so now this one we are going to see it again after some time you would notice and yes it's very important as well because you would see so many reactions moving around this blue vitriol now blue vitriol's molecular formula is very important which is now this is also a sulfate see glober salt sulfate of sodium dot 10h2 epsom salt sulfate of magnesium dot 7h2 and 
blue vitriol it is also sulfate but of copper dot 5h2 so see sulfate of copper dot 5h2 okay so copper sulfate dot 5h2 now here we would write the name copper sulfate pentahydrate but now after copper we are going to just write the charge of the copper in this compound okay now we all know what you have to do is simply take copper sulfate okay leave remove or, or just forget about this water molecule so simply see this copper sulfate okay molecule now you know how to reduce the charges by looking at the formula we have already studied it with the help of radicals right we are going to decode it so copper sulfate now we know copper and sulfate sulfate is so42 minus copper would be right? co2 plus as simple as that right we are going to balance the charges so copper is having two plus charge so we would write copper 2 in roman okay copper 2 in roman and then it's sulfate so copper sulfate but between copper and sulfate we are right, going to write the charge of the copper i have already told you which is two plus which means two in roman so copper two sulfate copper two sulfate right between copper and sulfate the charge of the copper in roman numerals and then simply the same way pentahydrate five water molecules so copper two sulfate pentahydrate clear moving ahead to the interesting example see pop so now you would say what is this pop sir is it related to any pop song and all those things no pop is simply plaster of paris and you would have heard it a lot of times right some or the other person in your life may have suffered okay with some minor injury or like something like that and you would have seen a plaster of paris okay coating on the on their body part wherever they have got that injury so this plaster of paris okay it is also having water of crystallization now very interesting to know right and now its formula is very interesting as well okay it is also a sulfate so see sulfate 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 now but this is the sulfate of calcium okay this was of copper this is calcium so calcium sulfate okay but now as i have told you fixed number of water molecules are associated with the compound so for all these compounds here only 10 water molecules should be associated with the sodium carbonate and yes it is washing soda crystal for globular salts always 10 water molecules would be associated with sodium sulfate okay in the same way for epsom salt always seven water molecules will be associated with the magnesium sulfate now here i'm talking about one 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 unit each which means 10 water molecules for one sodium carbonate 10 water molecules for one molecule of sodium sulfate seven water molecules for one molecule of magnesium sulfate are you getting it right so in the same way five water molecules for one molecule of copper sulfate and in the same way half water molecule for one molecule of calcium sulfate okay now here something tricky is going on half water molecule sir yes yes you're right half water molecule for one molecule of calcium sulfate now what we can do is we can we can also write this in some another fashion okay how see i have told you for one molecule of calcium sulfate half molecule of water okay so fixed number of water molecules for which are which are associated with this compound now you can do what what we can do is i can just double the number of calcium sulfate molecules okay so i have taken two molecules of calcium sulfate so for two if i have doubled the number of calcium sulfate the number of water molecules will also be double so double of half is one okay so for two molecules of calcium sulfate okay there would be one molecule of water okay but now we need to put this in bracket okay because this two is only for this calcium sulfate not for this water molecules right you're getting it for two molecules of calcium sulfate half would become double that is one okay but for just for two molecules of calcium sulfate right so we are writing this calcium sulfate in bracket suggesting that two molecules of calcium sulfate and one molecule of water got that right for this i'm writing it like this okay two molecules of for one molecule of calcium sulfate suppose like this half molecule of water for two molecules of calcium sulfate double of half is one one molecule of water okay so two molecules of calcium sulfate associated with one molecule of water see two molecules of calcium sulfate associated with one molecule of water okay here it is one what is got that so if at all the formula is written in written in this way don't get confused that oh which compound they have given it is simply your pop plaster of paris okay whether they can write in this fashion or whether they may write in this fashion or they can write in this fashion okay but the compound is the same plaster of paris so why i have told you this thing you need to 
identify the you, you should also be able to see the molecular formula and know that which compound they are talking about for that reason and also we know the concept that fixed number of automolecules will be associated with the compound correct so for pop you always remember half water molecules are associated with one molecule of calcium sulfate okay so this equation would help you to determine the or 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 just analyze the formula as well okay and reach to the answer that is pop okay by looking at the formula you can reach the you can reach the name of the compound okay if you know how many water molecules are associated with how many number of molecules of that particular compound clear in this way you have to remember the formula now moving ahead gypsum so for gypsum for one molecule of calcium sulfate there are two molecules of water okay which are associated with it okay for one molecule of calcium sulfate two molecules of water so formula would be calcium sulfate dot 2 h2 clear now what would be the name here calcium sulfate dihydrate here calcium sulfate semi hydrate okay so we have covered the names as well got that okay now it would be a piece of cake for us to understand what are hydrated substances because hydrated substances are simply those substances which have water of crystallization that's it okay so substances which contain water of crystallization that's it those substances are hydrated substances now examples we already know the examples for water of crystallization we have seen so many examples the same are for the so the same would be exactly the same would be for the hydrated substances as well because all these substances were having water of crystallization so all these substances are hydrated substances okay right got this point you can also add some another examples as well if you are finding in your book okay the substances if you are finding any substance in your book which is having water of crystallization with it don't worry don't hesitate to put it in the list of hydrated substances absolutely it is a hydrated substance okay now in the same way what is an anhydrous substance so what we are going to do is we are going to just remove the water of crystallization from the hydrated substance and whatever would be left over that would be our anhydrous substance clear so hydrated substance lose their water of crystallization okay for example suppose i am having a hydrated substance like this copper sulfate dot 5h2 this one okay now in some way okay for example what i did is i heated this okay so let me tell you an interesting thing so if i'm taking a test tube okay what i'm going to do is i'm going to take this test tube and i'm going to okay fix this test tube slightly tilting okay in this way now i would fix to a test tube stand or something like that but i would fix this in slightly this way okay and then i would take this copper sulfate okay or copper sulfate crystals or blue vitriol simply blue vitriol or copper sulfate pentahydrate i would take so these are blue color okay by su suggesting from their name itself these are blue color crystals okay so see this blue color crystals what this now what i'm going to do is i have told you i would heat it right so i'm heating this right like this okay i'm heating it now what would happen is this copper sulfate dot 5h2 or blue vitriol which is blue in color right blue in color yes and this is blue vitriol so this blue vitriol what would happen this would lose its water of crystallization okay here it is dot five water molecules it would lose and it would simply form this copper sulfate giving up five water molecules okay now this copper sulfate would be white in color okay clear with this point so after heating what i would observe it would lose its blue color it would become white in color just for your curiosity i'm telling you this thing okay so see it would form white colored substance which is copper sulfate now on a white board i cannot use a white color so you just understand this thing that this is white color okay white color substance now the water which it is losing why we have taken this test tube in a slant way okay so that the water which is given up okay this water we know that the upper part of the test tube is slightly cooler right as compared to the 
bottom because we are heating the bottom so if i would keep this test tube straight away in this way and if i would heat the blue vitriol or our copper sulfate of 5h2o here the water molecules okay right they would get separated from our copper sulfate and this water molecules in the form of vapor would run to the top of the test tube but here it is a cooler part so they would condense again we all know condensation would take place and this water molecules this liquid water molecules can again slip into the test tube and again reach to this copper sulfate so we don't want this thing right to avoid this thing okay what we are going to do is we are taken the we are taken the test tube and we have arranged it in the slant manner because suppose if this happens suppose for for some reason if this happens okay the water again comes down and at the same time we have stopped heating this so what would happen if the water again slips down our white calcium our white copper sulfate okay our white copper sulfate okay this which is present here okay after heating is done now if the water molecule if, if the test tube is in the straight it is arranged in the in this straight manner so our water molecules would slip away from the sides of the test tube and would again reach to the white mass of copper sulfate and it would again turn this to blue copper sulfate okay so for that reason we take the test tube and we arrange it in the slant way because whatever water would form okay whatever water would be given off in the form of vapors okay this vapor would condense here okay and this water would be removed out of the test tube okay it would automatically flow out of the test tube it won't get back the copper sulfate so that's the simple reason why we are taking the test tube in the slant way okay so i have also told you that i have also i have also given you the reason as well if they ask you somewhere you can tell them okay so now what we have done is simply we have removed the water of crystallization right this five water molecules we have removed clear now the remaining after removal of this water of crystallization what whatever it is remaining so this is remaining copper sulfate so this is a anhydrous substance clear so hydrated substance lose their water of crystallization see hydrated substance because it is having a water of crystallization with it loses its water of crystallization see it has lost its water of crystallization and it is getting converted into anhydrous substance clear okay now here for your info the crystals of copper sulfate here okay here they, these are blue crystals clear initially but after heating and after the removal of water molecules this would become powdery mass okay white powdery mass powder what this so what what is an hydrous substance very simple okay so now we have just now seen what are hydrated substances and what are anhydrous substances now let's move ahead and see what is efflorescence okay so related to this concept only i have taken up with this topic I have, i have moved on to this topic and you would feel very amazed to know that some hydrated substances okay some hydrated substances they when they are exposed to air okay or when they are exposed to atmosphere they on their own leave or lose the water of crystallization okay now previously when we have, when we have understand when we have when we have Uh, understood what are an hydro substances we have seen that we have heated copper sulfate so for copper sulfate we need to heat it so that we uh, for, for in case of blue vitriol sorry we need to heat it right so that it loses its water of crystallization but in case of some other hydrated substances they lose their water of crystallization just when they are exposed to atmosphere like that only okay on their own okay just when they are exposed to atmosphere which means that just when they are exposed to dry air okay so some hydrated substances lose their water of crystallization on exposure to dry air just on exposure to dry air okay so if i am taking some hydrated substance i am exposing it to the dry air it would lose its water of crystallization such substances are called as efflorescent substances okay and this phenomena is called as efflorescence okay so what is this efflorescence very simple some hydrated substances they just lose their water of crystallization on exposure to dry air okay some hydrated substances lose their water of crystallization okay on exposure to dry air clear now when they lose this water of crystallization we have observed that okay they lose their crystalline shape okay just like our copper sulfate 
or our blue vitriol lost its crystalline uh, lost lost its crystal like structures and it form a powdery mass so in the same way they also okay these efflorescent substances also lose their crystalline shape and they also form powdery mass okay correct now let's see which are those hydrated substances which when exposed to the dry air lose their water of crystallization okay so first is washing soda the first example which we have seen for hydrated substances as well okay or for understanding the water of crystallization which is washing soda crystals okay now this crystals okay now we all know its molecular formula it is sodium carbonate decahydrate right so sodium carbonate dot 10 h2o so now when it is exposed to dry air what happens is this sodium carbonate okay it it doesn't get rid of its all water molecules okay only one water molecule is left with this sodium carbonate molecule only one but rest nine water molecules leave sodium carbonate they say tata bye bye main nikal ja raha hu okay so in this way they move out okay so this sodium carbonate dot 10h2o or our washing soda crystals okay when they are exposed to dry air okay i'm just writing da okay so what they do is they give up their nine what nine water molecules which are water of crystallization right which are the water of crystallization we know this 10 10 out of 10 water molecules are called as water of crystallization so out of this 10 they give up nine and keep only one with it okay so what we say it as since it is only since it is only having one water molecule so we say that it is now a monohydrate right here it was a decahydrate 10 water molecules so it is a monohydrate but still yes it is still a hydrated substance because it is still having a water of crystallization though it is only one water molecule but yes still it is having so it is hydrated substance clear so efflorescence doesn't mean that a substance would totally give up their water of crystallization okay it doesn't mean that but yes if the substance is willingly giving up all its water of crystallization then also we can say that efflorescence is taking place what is important for us to understand that the substance loses the water of crystallization whether it loses completely or partially we don't care we just care about whether it is losing the water molecule or not water of crystallization or not okay if it is losing efflorescence is happening though it may lose completely or may lose partially no problem with this clear okay so now let's see the next example globber salt globber salt we you know sodium sulfate dot 10h2 correct so this was this globber salt sodium sulfate dot 10h2o clear now this also when we have when we expose it to dry air now this globber salt it completely gives up its all 10 water molecules okay so now we just care about whether our hydrated substance is losing the water molecule or not or losing its water of crystallization or not when exposed to the dry air so yes it is losing we don't care about whether it is losing completely or partially yes it is losing this is efflorescence that's it this is efflorescent substance that's it okay but yes we need to remember that it is completely losing all its water of crystallization so now here this na2so4 we would get along with 10 water molecules now my question to you is whether this sodium sulfate is hydrated or anhydrous okay so now you can think on your own and answer it okay i won't tell you because i have given already you the hint here okay you can just correlate with this and you can get your answer okay next is epsom salt now here in epsom salt we know it is magnesium sulfate dot 7h2 right okay so when it is exposed to dry air again what would happen is it would also lose its water of crystallization but how much it is losing it is losing six water molecules but it is keeping one with it just the same like the washing soda crystals okay so losing six keeping one with itself in this way okay which means it is also a monohydrate like this one which means it is also a hydrated substance right because it is having water of crystallization and apart from this one other six water molecules have been lost clear magnesium sulfate dot h2 and 6h2 so making 7h2 clear with this part okay now moving ahead to the next phenomena which is hygroscopy now this is not related with the water of crystallization it is very very simple phenomena suppose i am having a substance okay now this substance okay i have exposed it to the atmosphere i have kept it now this substance started to absorb the moisture from the atmosphere 
okay now what is moisture we all know it's simply the water vapor which is present in the air around us okay so this substance started to absorb this water vapor which is present in the air and such substances which do this karma this action which or which act like this behave like this are called as hygroscopic substances okay those substances which absorb moisture simply okay when they are exposed to atmosphere okay and this phenomena okay is called as hygroscopy clear clear with this point now what are which are those substances let's see some examples of this such type of substances okay which is first is concentrated sulfuric acid next is calcium oxide now for one, one question for you you can just find out the uh, common name for this compound calcium oxide okay it's very simple or you can if you don't know right now you can go back uh, you can again uh, in some other time you can go back to google and just google it okay we have already studied about this thing that's why i'm asking you then silica gel now very much very much interesting thing about this silica gel i will tell you okay first of all let me tell you what is silica silica is simply sio2 silicon dioxide now this silicon dioxide gel okay or this silicon dioxide is used in order to absorb the moisture in the bottles or in the bags and you may have observed this okay whenever you are purchasing new bottle or new school bag or something like something like that okay have a look open the bag check for some packet you may you may get some packet okay in some bags in some bags there 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 are some packets and on that packet they have written it is silica okay do not eat or all those things they have written that okay because it's a chemical no need to eat this but yes they keep this silica packets in them now why why it would be you're right you're right you're thinking right in order to absorb the moisture from those objects okay whatever moisture would be there in that object these silica packets would absorb the moisture clear because they have the tendency to absorb the moisture simple when they are exposed to atmosphere clear now next is p2o5 phosphorus pentoxide these also has the same tendency to absorb the moisture when exposed to atmosphere clear now these hygroscopic substances irrespective of their karma of their action of their behavior they are in solid state okay they can be in solid state or they can be in liquid state okay hygroscopic substances can be in solid state or liquid state clear now moving ahead to the next phenomena which is deliquescence now you can say that this phenomena is the cousin brother of hygroscopy or the deliquescent substances are cousin brothers or like a higher advanced brother okay or you can say big brother big bro of hygroscopic substances why i'm saying you because these substances okay they also absorb the moisture when they are exposed to atmosphere okay but they don't stop there itself what they do is after absorbing this moisture they form the they form their saturated solutions okay so see some substances absorb the moisture when exposed to the atmosphere same behavior like the hygroscopic substances okay absorbing the moisture when exposed to the atmosphere but they don't stop here they what they do is they form their saturated solution okay these substances dissolve in that water and form saturated solution and this phenomena is called as deliquescence and such substances are called as deliquescent substances okay they absorb the moisture from the atmosphere they dissolve in it and form the saturated solution for example let's see deliquescent substances naoh okay koh naoh we know sodium hydroxide koh potassium hydroxide okay all these substances show this behavior okay magnesium chloride calcium chloride zinc chloride and ferric chloride okay got with this point okay now let's move ahead to the next concept which is drying agent and dehydrating agent okay now we are going to use the things which we have studied so far okay so for drying agent you just go back and reconnect with the concept of hygroscopy or hygroscopic substances so those substances which simply absorb the moisture right from when they are exposed to atmosphere those are hygro hygroscopic substances now those substances okay exactly those substances okay which can absorb the moisture but now from the other substances clear but now while absorbing the moisture from other substances they should not react with the other substances so such substances okay are called as drying agents okay which one the substances which absorb the moisture from the other substances right 
they would absorb the moisture from the other substances without reacting with that substance okay substances which absorb the moisture from the other substances okay without reacting with that substance clear so these are called as drying agents now for example what are drying agents okay what what means let's see the examples of drying agent but before that for one one more thing that drying agents are also called as desiccating agents or desiccants as well okay now which are those so see all hygroscopic substances can behave like this okay like we have seen hygroscopic substances examples like concentrated sulfuric acid calcium oxide silica gel phosphorus pentoxide they can behave as drying agents because they can absorb the moisture from other substance okay without reacting with other substance okay but yes not all hygroscopic substances it depends on it depends from substance to substance okay now we cannot use concentrated sulfuric acid as a drying agent for 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 drying all the substances okay because with some substances concentrated sulfuric acid react okay so pardon me i have said that all hygroscopic substances can be used as drying agents i mean that mostly the hygroscopic substances can be used as drying agent because hygroscopic substances also absorb the moisture from the atmosphere so these substances also absorb the moisture but from the other substances but one thing need, one thing which needs to be taken care of that this substances okay whichever substance we are using as a drying agent okay it definitely should have the property of absorbing the moisture correct but we have to make sure that that substance doesn't react with the substance which we want to dry okay so for that purpose we cannot use concentrated sulfuric acid to dry every substance because with some substances concentrated sulfuric acid reacts vigorously okay very very lovely so we cannot use that so you need to keep thing or keep the track of this thing regarding the concept of the drying agent in your mind okay now uh, examples are concentrated sulfuric acid calcium oxide silica gel phosphorus pentoxide these are also the examples of hygroscopic substances but the thing which you need to take care of i have told you these substances can be used as drying agent provided we need to check whether when we, whenever we are using the substances to dry the other substance whether to dry the other substance these substances should not react with that other substance then only we can use them as a drying agent clear apart from that calcium chloride zinc chloride are also used as the desiccating agents or desiccants now these are can you remember these are the examples for right your right deliquescent substances okay so deliquescent substances are like big bro of hygroscopic substances right they also absorb the moisture right but they dissolve in that absorbed moisture to form the saturated solution so we can also make use of these substances because they also absorb the moisture right our main basic aim or our main basic requirement for for a drying agent is it should absorb the moisture okay so yes these are also absorbing moisture but they are like next level pro pro max level okay these absorb the moisture but they also dissolve in that moisture to form the solution okay but since they absorb the moisture we can also use them as a drying agent provided we need to take care of the very important thing which i have told you that these substances also do not react with the substances which we are trying to dry okay then only we can use these substances okay calcium chloride as well and zinc chloride as well okay because they also absorb the moisture very very clear with this point so friends let's move on to the last topic of this video lecture which is dehydrating agents right we have just now seen what are drying agents so dehydrating agents means see they would in in short you can just okay keep in your brain that dehydrating right d and whatever is related to this hydrating word which means that it is very close to water right so simply this remove water okay you can remember in this way okay now what are those substances how they remove the water simply these dehydrating agents are those substances which remove hydrogen and oxygen elements okay hydrogen and oxygen elements now how in in, in what ratio in the ratio of 2 is to 1 okay so now whatever i'm going to talk here um, that would make sense when you would remember just simply that they remove water okay from the compound but how they remove the constituent elements of the water which are hydrogen and oxygen and also in the ratio 2 is to 1 so that ultimately a water molecule or x y z number of water molecules are removed okay or n number of water molecules are removed okay but the ultimate goal is to remove the water but how they remove is they remove the the elements okay which from which water is formed 
which are hydrogen and oxygen and in the ratio 2 is to 1 so this means ultimately it is removing two hydrogen atoms one oxygen atom which means water molecule correct so substances which remove hydrogen and oxygen okay in the ratio of 2 is to 1 okay right in the form of water simply from the compound okay clear you, you have got the point now this means that from the from the reactions we would see that how they are removing okay how they are removing water i will tell you but first of all let's see the examples of dehydrating agents so this thing you would get more and more clear when we will see the reactions okay so what are dehydrating so what are the examples of dehydrating agents simply concentrated sulfuric acid alumina phosphorus pentoxide okay these are some examples so these substances okay remove hydrogen and oxygen in the ratio of 2 is to 1 in the form of water from the compound now how let's see so first i will i will write the reactions involving the concentrated sulfuric acid or i will help you understand how concentrated sulfuric acid is acting as a dehydrating agent okay so for example now i have always told you blue vitriol or copper sulfate dot 5h2o where we are going to use it okay <clears throat> over an over an period when we are going to study these topics so again comes our copper sulfate dot 5h2 okay now we know that how to remove this five water molecules which is actually the water of crystallization we can simply heat and remove it right but there is an another way to remove this what we are going to do is we are going to use concentrated sulfuric acid here okay so this concentrated sulfuric acid what it is going to do it is going to simply take out hydrogen and oxygen from this compound in the ratio of 2 is to 1 right which means simply it is going to remove water molecule okay so now see copper sulfur oxygen hydrogen oxygen so okay so it is going to remove hydrogen and oxygen in this ratio 2 is to 1 so what it simply does it gives us copper sulfate and five water molecules okay so this entire five water molecules are being removed from copper sulfate dot 5h2 okay so now here hydrogen and oxygen is removed in the ratio of 2 is to 1 right in the form of water molecule correct okay this means that one water molecule is removed and in the same manner five water molecules have been removed by concentrated sulfuric acid right so we can get copper sulfate and five water molecules clear how it dehydrated our blue vitriol okay now in the same fashion now what would happen here you would have guessed it right here i have already told you this is blue in color but when it loses its water of crystallization it forms white powdery mass here it is blue crystals here it would form white powdery mass we have already seen this right now another example okay of a reaction in which concentrated sulfuric acid is dehydrating a substance is simply you can take cane sugar okay we have we all have the table sugar in our home so that sugar is simply the cane sugar okay sucrose so its formula is c12 h22 o11 okay this is our cane sugar now when we are using concentrated sulfuric acid okay or suppose we are adding concentrated sulfuric acid to this cane sugar what is going to happen is now hydrogen and oxygen are going to be removed in the form in the ratio of 2 is to 1 or simply water molecule is now going to be removed from this carbohydrate now you would say sir how how is it possible here we can see that yes there are five water molecules here that they have been removed here now see here there are hydrogen and oxygen okay elements these hydrogen and oxygen elements would be removed by the concentrated sulfuric acid so what would be remaining carbon right so only carbon is there now bichara carbon is only there here okay let me just erase because we need to stoichiometrically balance the reaction so carbon and hydrogen and oxygen in the ratio of 2 is to 1 so water molecule now how much water molecule that we can see from the our reactant itself so see there are 12 carbon so i'm just writing here 12 carbon would be removed then and there are 22 hydrogen and 11 oxygen so exactly double the number of double the number of oxygen atoms is the hydrogen atoms correct so in water also exactly double the number of oxygen atom are hydrogen atoms so see if you would try to balance here i would write here 11 so 11 twos are 22 hydrogens right and 11 oxygen atoms so 11 oxygen atoms okay so in this fashion this concentrated sulfuric acid would dehydrate our cane sugar okay giving us carbon and water molecules okay so have you understood this i hope you have got my point 
ओके दे कैन रिमूव मीन्स यू हैव टू जस्ट सिंपली रिमेंबर दैट दे कैन दे रिमूव हाइड्रोजन एंड ऑक्सीजन ओके इन द रेशियो ऑफ टू इज टू वन फ्रॉम द कॉम्पाउंड दैट सेट दिस दिस इज द कर्मा ऑफ डिहाइड्रेटिंग एजेंट दिस इज द एक्शन ऑफ डिहाइड्रेटिंग एजेंट क्लियर विद दिस पॉइंट ओके नाउ इट्स टाइम टू सी द क्वेश्चन ओके लेट्स लेट्स गेट let's get to know that what actually we have understood till this point okay so i have brought some interesting questions to you there are some some are quite simple or and some are like little bit tricky also so i would explain you okay so you can also think on your own okay this is a simple question till this point whatever we have studied you just try to recollect it okay first read first of all read the question how hydrated salt can be made and hydrous okay and then try to go through the first means first topic of this video till this point and figure out the answer how we are going to make a hydrated salt which means simply a hydrated substance right okay hydrated substance okay and hydrous okay so what all techniques we have studied or what all methods we have studied till now okay so starting from the first point we have studied water of crystallization right then moving ahead we have studied hydrated substances and then anhydrous substances and when we studied anhydrous substances we have taken the example of blue vitriol and, and what we did was we have removed the water of crystallization okay completely completely okay making anhydrous means there there is no water of crystallization left with the substance now okay no water of crystallization here okay uh, water of crystallization i'm just writing here woc okay the short form water of crystallization here no water of crystallization here there would be 1 2 3 whatever number but there is yes there is some water of crystallization here in hydrated substances so what we did for blue vitriol we heated it right so first method was means first method which we can use to make hydrated salt and hydrous is yes we got the answer we can heat okay heat and remove the water of crystallization completely from the hydrated substance and make it anhydrous what answer then the second method was we can we then again moved on to the properties after after studying anhydrous substances we moved on to properties we studied about first of all the efflorescence so in efflorescence what we have studied hydrated substances when exposed to dry air they just give off their water of crystallization so we got the second technique right just exposed to dry air okay this can also help us to make the substance anhydrous okay exposed to dryer but yes it depends okay not all substances not all anhydrous uh, not all hydrated substances would lose their water of crystallization when exposed to dryer okay some have to be heated right you understand that now moving ahead after efflorescence we then again moved on to the next next properties which were hygroscopy and deliquescence so they were not related to this water of crystallization part right and then finally we came to dehydrating agents and drying agents now in drying agents what we have done is our drying agents what they do they remove the moisture from the substance correct so these are simply the hygroscopic substances they can they can be used to just remove the moisture so no need, so here there is uh, no correlation between the hydrated substances and removing the moisture okay now yes but the another part is dehydrating agents right and just now we have studied our blue vitriol we removed its entire water of crystallization how how by using concentrated sulfuric acid by using a dehydrating agent right so we got another technique how to make anhydrous by using dehydrating agent okay so dehydrating agent can also make our hydrated salts and hydrous clear with this point okay so i i hope you have got your answer okay moving on to the next question now though sodium chloride is not deliquescent okay so now you need to understand this thing or you need to remember this thing that our sodium chloride okay pure sodium chloride nacl is not deliquescent okay fine you got this info okay fine now what they are asking us though sodium chloride is not deliquescent why table salt kept open in rainy season results into formation of salt solution okay so now can you just correlate this thing see deliquescent substances are those substances which absorb the moisture from the atmosphere right but they don't stop there okay just like the hygroscopic substances after absorbing the moisture from the atmosphere what they do is they simply dissolve in that moisture and form the saturated solution so they are saying that table salt 
when kept open in rainy season it is also resulting into the formation of salt solution which means that it is also absorbing the moisture from the atmosphere and resulting into the formation of its saturated solution so they are saying that table salt is like behaving as a deliquescent substance okay but now you would be slightly tricked we are saying that sodium chloride is not deliquescent so how is this happening okay we know that sodium chloride is not deliquescent but when our table salt is kept open in the rainy season it is behaving as like of deliquescent substance okay now what's glitch in this okay what's the catch see our table salt which we are using okay which is commercially produced it doesn't it does not contain only nacl okay it also has along with nacl this two chlorides magnesium chloride and calcium chloride okay so this is where the glitch is happening and we have studied that magnesium chloride and calcium chloride these are deliquescent substances right we have studied it right we can go back and see see here deliquescent substances magnesium chloride calcium chloride right so they are deliquescent substances so what is going to happen here is these substances would absorb the moisture okay this magnesium chloride and calcium chloride would absorb the moisture and they would dissolve in that moisture forming the saturated solution okay but what we would observe is our entire salt is getting dissolved okay because it also has these two components okay so here is the glitch so you need to just tell that our table salt has these components okay not only just nacl so though nacl is not deliquescent but these two are deliquescent and since they are deliquescent they just behave like deliquescent substances they absorb the moisture get dissolved in it and form saturated solution that's why we get the salt solution when the table salt is kept open in the rainy season clear with this clear with the part so friends coming to the last question now you have to apply some your brain and the concept which we have studied so far okay with a very simple thing see with a very simple uh, co correlation to the mass okay which is a very simple thing right so in which of the following substances will there be a increase in mass b decrease in mass or c no change in mass okay but now when when they are exposed to just simply air okay so now <clears throat> first option is means first substance which is given to us and then we have to analyze whether its mass would increase decrease or its mass won't change is concentrated sulfuric acid okay so concentrated sulfuric acid we have studied it is an hygroscopic substance right so if i would keep concentrated sulfuric acid like this okay, in a beaker it would absorb the moisture from the atmosphere right moisture means water vapor right water which is present in the atmosphere and if the water is absorbed so here there are everywhere sulfuric acid molecules but now along with sulfuric acid molecules now there would be some water molecules as well right so initially the mass was only because of the sulfuric acid molecules but after exposure to the air water molecules means water is absorbed so water molecules are now also present here so the mass would definitely increase right because only the mass due to the sulfuric acid okay would be lesser as compared to the mass due to both sulfuric acid and water okay right correct got the point so the mass would increase clear very easy initially there was only sulfuric acid molecules everywhere everywhere in the beaker okay now there are sulfuric acid plus water molecules as well so it's now very clear from this two pictures that here the mass would be because of only this much molecules and here okay suppose here there are 50 sulfuric acid molecules but now here along with the 50 sulfuric acid molecules there are suppose 10 water molecules as well so only 50 sulfuric acid molecules mass we know how to calculate we know how to calculate molecular weight so after calculating this weight okay and after calculating the combined weight of 50 sulfuric acid molecules and 10 water molecules okay you would definitely get something much mass okay in number here right very simple now hydrated sodium carbonate so what would happen in this case okay before going to the answer you just think on your own you can pause it here and then resume back to see the answer okay so the, see hydrated sodium carbonate means we have studied about it sodium carbonate and hydrated right so this is the hydrated sodium carbonate na2co3 dot 10 h2o okay washing soda we have studied and this is an efflorescent substance right when exposed to the atmosphere it loses its water of crystallization 
right so how much water of crystallization it loses means how much water molecules it would lose out of its water water of crystallization out of this 10 it loses 9 right we all know this thing now only remaining is one water molecule with this okay so what is remaining now na2co3 dot 1 dot 1 h2o or h2o okay so these two things are remaining this and this so by definitely looking at this scenario we know that out of now 10 water molecules 9 has been lost now what is remaining only one water molecule along with sodium carbonate okay here there were 10 water molecules along with sodium carbonate so definitely when you would calculate the molecular weight of this entire compound okay using this formula na2co3.10h2o you would get roughly around 286 or something like that okay the molecular weight but after 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 the exposure to the air okay it would lose its nine water molecules so now whatever the answer would be here suppose suppose for example it is 286 okay i'm not sure pretty sure about it but suppose it is 286 so out of this now nine water molecules mass you have to reduce so 89 za is like once 162 right so 162 you have to just reduce from this 286 and whatever the mass would be that would be the answer okay suppose x so this would be definitely lesser right if i would reduce this so 6 minus 2 is 4 8 minus 6 2 and then 1 right so it's 124 so later the mass would be 124 around 124 so mass has decreased initially it was like 286 okay now it is like 184 124 okay so I have just assumed this number, maybe it would be right, maybe it would be wrong, but in, in order to make you understand, that's my point. Okay, so mass would decrease. So what would happen here? There is decrease in the mass. So friends, with this, we have reached the end of this video and I hope you would have enjoyed learning with me. You would have understood the concepts which we have learned so far in this entire video lecture. Okay, but please do let me know this thing in the comment section. I, I would be waiting for your comments. Okay, and as you all know, learn no matlab, free hai par, best hai. So see you in the next video with the remaining concepts of this chapter. Till then, keep studying. Bye-bye and have a great day.